they're very cute when you see them. You don't see them that often, but um, they're just like these, they look like fat little tiny chickens with little bobbles on their head. So uh, when we break down these shapes, we're just gonna get a lot of just egg shapes. Even the clone, it's just big old teardrop almost. What do you need to eat any legs? It's so cute. Okay, so I'm going to adjust this so we can see both my paper and the example. We have our, both our pencil and our eraser. And we're going to start with this big body. It's just one big egg. Like he hatched from an egg and he just stuck with the shape of his egg. I think I might make it even bigger. And for his head, I'm going to have him looking over. I want him to be looking at our flowers that we eventually put in. So I'm going to draw a big circle, not on the top of our egg sheet, but on to the side. Like it's about to roll down the end. And just so we know where this kind of um, transition in color goes, I'm just going to lightly put in a little round, almost like a rainbow shape, just right there, just so when we start painting in, you know, like, okay, blue goes here, orange goes there. Okay. So next, we're going to put circle where we're going to put our plume. Okay. And then we are going to start putting in um, and start connecting these guys. So I'm going to start from our plume. Which curve, yeah. And through, down, so it connects. <clears throat> what do I do? We're going to have just a straight line. We're not going to worry about the shape of the beak yet. We're just going to go on the side here. Just go a straight line. And on top of that line, even with that line, we're going to draw a little tiny circle, and that's going to be where our eye is. It's interesting because I noticed that when I was looking at our references for the crow, where like the eye is directly behind the beak. And I don't know, it's interesting, kind of like um, when you draw a human face, like our eye is pretty even with our nose almost. But that was interesting. Oh, that's true. Okay. So we're gonna go up to the top of the beak and down. So it goes up to that to where that circle is and then down to meet where that eye is. And then just a little bit smaller down to meet where that circle is. And then down to meet where the eye is. 
Almost like a little diamond right there. Let me zoom in so you can see it. Get a little. Okay. Next, we're going to kind of puff this out. See right there, it trickles out. Go out. And in and connect. So see we went from the beak and then out and connect it again. Okay. And again, out, just a little bit, just so it's not a perfect circle. And then in when it comes to the the plume right here. This is the plume. Okay. Then we're going to connect our body to our head. We're going to curve a little bit, not too much. See how it's a little straight here. So we're going to go following the circle, we're going to go straight. A little bit, just a little bit to the bottom. Oh. Tracy and Natalie, are you? Um, Did you need me to slow down or? Waiting on starting. Well, I'll go over the drawing again if you need me to later, okay? Okay. So we're gonna flatten the circle again. Oh wait, let's try. Let's try. I think that means never mind. Okay. <laughs> I think. Never mind. And then flatten it a little bit, just so it's not a perfect circle. Just doing these short little straight lines, just so it's not so round and bulbous. There we go. Okay. Now we can put in our cute little feet. And they're just little, little straight legs, little short things. Use them just scuttle around. So there's two little legs. And then we're putting in our little, we're just doing straight little lines. We're not worrying about like the thickness. We're gonna put in that kind of texture when we're painting. So our feet and on that side, and on that side. One that kind of curves in the middle. Again, one on the right, one on the left. One kind of curves in the middle. Okay. So that's our basic shape of our whale. Now we get to start putting in the shapes of where our uh, I see Tracy's leg as I pop. Okay, so we got that. Now we're going to go over with our right here. So starting with the eye, curve out. We're going to make like almost like a, a loose S shape. So curve 
Out, in, out, and then connect right at the neck. It's so cute. <laughs> cute. Out, and then we're going to thicken it and we're going to mimic that line that we just did. So out, in, out, down. Another line goes here. First, we're going to go right about where the plume is. Go up, down, and around. And then we're going to go up, down, like. I think it kind of tapers off here. Hold it down. It's skinny right here. Because it's turning away from us. Okay. So that's the basic shape of our uh our quail. Last thing is just kind of ovaling out the eyes a bit just so they're not perfect circles and after that we can start erasing these underdrawings for our basic shapes so i'm going to just erase these i'm also going to slightly erase anything that's really dark just so when we paint over it we don't see it too badly I didn't know that quill flew because you see them and they just kind of scuttle around wherever they're going. But last camping trip I went, I kept hearing this sound. It was just like crying and crying. I'm like, what is that? It was a quail in a tree. Oh. And I heard enough like the same sound from like farther down. So I guess they got separated at some point. Oh, I didn't know that you guys flew. I think they're like chickens where they don't fly long distances. They kind of just flap their wings and get a little bit of air. So they don't migrate in winter? I don't think so. Do they? they must, I, I don't know. I never really thought about it. I've only ever seen them like scuttle around with their babies behind them. I've never seen them fly at all since so like this last few months ago. That's something I'll have to look up. <laughs> I'll have to look that up. Um, maybe when some paint's drying, I'll look it up. All right. So now we're going to draw our uh, California poppies. And I want this to be like a cute little standalone illustration. So I want my poppies to be kind of even with the feet. So if you have anything that's straight, maybe like your scrap paper. Just kind of take out the little line, lightly line, just so we can erase it after. Just so when we draw in our flowers, they're the same. Uh, they're on the same field as the quail. Okay, so now we're going to start drawing these lines. And some of them can be for leaves, some of them can be for flowers. I just don't want them to be straight. I want them to kind of curve a little bit.
And then we can connect some more lines to them. Oh, what is that? What is it? For the horse? Okay, so once you have a few lines, we're going to start adding flowers. I'm going to have one sticking out. So he, so he's seeing the middle of it. And I'm going to start with a teeny tiny little square for the base. I'm going to zoom in so you can see better. There we go. And then for our petals, go out. And I kind of draw like a little upside down triangle. It connects to that square. Then I'm going to go up again, go through it. And another triangle. Right here. And notice how I'm going through the petals. I want our petals to kind of overlap each other a little bit. Let's make another one of those. I want to do it down here. Do this one. We'll notice how my example has it more curved out. Uh, this is something that you can do after you do the basic shapes, or if uh, you want to, you want to go ahead and try to copy those shapes. You can. I like to do just the basic shapes that way. Like I know, okay, this is the right shape, this is the right size, and then I can do all my details. So again, make a little teeny tiny square. And then I'm gonna go triangle. 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 Okay, so you can see the whole body now, right? So we have two rows, and you can do yours different than mine. You don't have to do your flowers exactly. And then I'm going to do a flower that is facing us, so you can see the inside. Okay. So I'm going to start with a dot in the middle, right? Just so I know, okay, that's the center. And then I'm going to start. Drawing triangles around that dot. So the point always meets where that dot is. There we go. Okay. That's a good amount for me. You could add more if you'd like. All right. So now I'm going to start curving in my petals so it's not those straight triangles. Um, before I do this, if your flowers are a little 
heavy and dark. I would just go over a little bit with your eraser, just lightly so it's lighter. Just so there's a lot of lines and it's a smaller drawing. So we're not confusing ourselves. And I'm just lightly doing it. I'm not erasing completely. Still see it, but it's not super dark. So now each petal, I'm gonna curve out, right? Curve, see I'm curving, that's not a really sharp edge. Curving, leading down to the square. Next one again, curving out. Curve, soft edge, going around, soft edge, down to the square. Then this last petal again, curving up, soft edge, down. Down the curve, down to the edge. Now it's cool. All right. And then don't worry about thickening up your um, your stem because we can use our paintbrush for that. Okay. So our next one, we're gonna do the same thing, but tinier. So we're curving out, soft edge, coming around, down to the square. We'll zoom in a bit. Again, curving out, soft edge, following the shape of our triangle. And it curves down to the square. One more time. Curve edge down to the square. That's where the stem is. This one, you guessed it, we're curving it. We're making it not sharp. But this one, it's open to us, right? So we're just softening those corners and leading down to that where that dot is where the center is um for this one you could even kind of ripple the edge a little bit because not every flower is the exact same things happen And then for the leaves, so um, poppy leaves, they, they're very, they're not thick leaves. They're not, they're not like the little daisy leaves that we learned how to do in school. They're not like that. They're very, um, very thin. They have lots of little, teeny tiny leaves on them. And honestly, you could probably do it in the, in the painting section. So I think it'd be better for us to just do it when we paint. So it's just, it's all like little tiny branches. Don't worry about your leaves yet. Okay, so I think we're ready to start painting.
So I'm going to zoom out so everyone can see everything for those still drawing. And I'm just going to go over the different colors we're going to make before we get started. Everyone has some time to catch up. It's okay. All right. So we're going to be mixing blue, orange, black, you know, because we, we made so much black this, <laughs> this class. And um, a little teeny tiny bit of brown, a little bit of brown for the little peeps, and green. So for our blue, it's not a really bright sky blue. We're going to have to make like a darker blue. Um, we can do that by uh, adding a little teeny, teeny, tiny bit of yellow and red to the blue. Not enough to make it brown, not enough to make it black. It just makes it darker. Um, the reason that, I, that we do that is um, so on our color wheel, for complementary colors, um, the complementary color of blue is orange. So whenever you add orange to blue or blue to orange, it dims it down. And you can continue to dim it down until it turns into a brown. So for our blue, I'm gonna dip in. So I'm dipping my... Uh, brush into some water. I'm gonna cover my painting. Wait, are you guys still drawing? I don't wanna, are you guys still drawing? You can answer in the chat or let me know. We're good? Okay, so I'm just going to cover my painting just so when I mix the colors, I'm not making a mess because I'm a very messy person. Okay, so my palette's right there. So we're going to mix, pick up some blue. Washing off my brush before I get my little bit of yellow, just a little bit, and the tiniest bit of red. Can't stress how tiny. We're going to mix it around and hopefully it makes a dark blue. And it did! Hooray, color blue! Going to use our uh, test paper uh, color match. That's pretty dang close. That's pretty dang close. So we got our blue. I'm also going to mix an orange because I kind of like that the blue and orange mixed together. I want to have that orange ready so. It's not. We don't, I don't have any blue. I don't have blue. You don't have any blue? Yeah. Uh, do you have, um, you have brown? Uh, I do. If you want, you can make yours a girl quail because uh, girl quails are brown on the top. Cool. Okay. Or, you know, a magical quail that's rainbow. Hey, sorry, that's all right. A easy. little bit. Yeah, just super easy. Just wipe it away. <laughs> it looks like water place, right? So now we're going to uh, make our orange. I found the red. It has no more. It's okay. 
Because brown is a very natural color. Hey, do red on it, on the purple. We're gonna mix an orange. So we're mixing red and yellow together. And I want it to be a really fiery orange. I don't want it to be like a pumpkin orange, which is exactly what I made, which means we need to add more red. Thank you. That's a little not nice. All right, that's really bright orange. It looks red on the screen. Let's See, that's pretty reddish. Add some purple. Got some purple in. Oops. Okay, so we got our blue and our orange. We need a lot of purple here. And all purple. Does it stop my All right, so we're going to get started with the blue. The red. Yeah, that probably is a little not. more pink. It doesn't have enough water, that's why. Well, let's add a little bit of water. All right, so now we're going to get started going on our blue. I'm going to start on the head. And I'm just going to go round. Give me some round. You know what? This is a small area. Feel free to use a smaller brush. <laughs> hey, look. We're not being pad. Around, around. And then when we get to this head, so the um, the feathers are kind of variegated and shiny here. So to give that same to give that same impression. We're gonna kind of make little top, 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 down the back of the neck. So we're gonna go top, 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 top. So let me go right here. So see, top, top, top. See how it's just little taps. And feel free to fill it in pretty good. You just want to have turn off the lights so you can see better. You just want to have some white spaces in between. You could, it doesn't have to be super spread out. You just want to have some white. To give that illusion. Illusion. Reminds me of that. Uh, Winnie the Pooh show where he goes, tut tut, looks like rain. Then we have it down that far. I'm going to switch to my big brush just because this is a big area.
There we go. Notice how I'm not going past where the orange goes because I want to kind of keep it separated, even though I want them to kind of blend together. I don't want them, I want them to stay on the same side. Okay, so I've got my blue. Now I'm going to start with the orange. So clean off my brush. Dip into this great orange that we made. Okay, so starting down here. Oh, it's so pretty. Going up. Using a small brush, you can do a little. A little tiny bit of feathers coming off here. So just a few, not everywhere. You don't want it to be fuzzy. Tuck, 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 tuck. Every time I clean my brush, I always lay it down on the table. I don't leave it in the water. So I don't want my brush to get ruined. So I'm going around. Filling it in. And when everything's filled in, I think I'm ready. I hope this works. I get nervous every time I do. It's kind of a merging effect because I don't know how it's going to work. Kind of just got to let the paint do its thing. So it's spreading slowly. I'm going to add a little bit more blue so it does its thing. Okay. Stop, Sosa. Okay. I'm going to let that do its thing. So while that's going on, we're going to mix a black. So, um, bl yes, blue and orange. If you don't have blue, you can use brown and have it be a female quail because the female quails are brown here. Or you can have it be a made up fantasy quail and play around with colors too. I, I don't want to discourage that either. <laughs> okay, so while we're waiting for that to dry, we're going to make a brown. So we're going to. Yeah. Red. Mark my brush. Yellow. And a little bit of blue. Just a little bit. Mix it up. So we get. That's like a green brown. That's like something good. So we're going to add a little bit more red. So we're just going to pull around. You know what, let's make a brown first. If you haven't gotten black yet. If you've gotten like a weird brown, go ahead and save it. Because we only need brown for the little beets. So. 
Might as well get the feet out of the way, right? Okay. So for the feet, we're just gonna make little tiny dots. Go tip, 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 all the way down. So if you have your brown, using, notice how I'm, how I'm using my brush. It's kind of to the side. It's not straight, it's not straight down. It's to the side. I want kind of the side of the brush. Not completely, so I'll show you. So this is straight down, right? Look it up. So this is me holding it to the side. See? I don't want the entire side of the brush. That's too long. Just gonna hold my brush to the side. And it's okay if they're not even or if something's bleeding into another thing. I just don't want it to be little sticks. That's all I don't want. Tip, 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 Put little teeny tiny toe claws so you can load your brush with paint and then you can use the side something so it's not super full of paint. Just so it, it gives you more control and will help you make a teenier, tinier um, paint stroke. And then you just draw. Tiny little, can't even see it. Tiny tiny little, uh, little toes. You're so teeny. See, it just makes it perfect. Little tiny tiny toe claws. There we go. Now, if you have your orange, I mean your orange, if you have your crown left after that, you can use that brown, put more paint into it, and make it black. So you're just going to keep reusing the paint you already have. I'm sure you've got brown left, or you didn't use hardly any brown. Keep using that brown. Just add more paint to it until it turns black. So that's a reddish brown. I think I'm going to add more yellow and more blue. That looks black. We're going to test it. It might be more green. I don't know yet. That's, that's pretty black. Okay. So once you reach your black, make sure to test it. Always remember to test. Again to fill that in. And 
If you're left-handed like me, remember to be mindful of where your hand is. I don't want to get my hand into wet paint. So I'm putting my arm way over here. Going in this front part. And your blue is probably still wet. So make sure not to go past where that little white stripe is. It's okay for these two to blend the, the, the head part. It's so sharp and iconic looking. We don't want it to get muddy with another section. Next, we're going to do the top of the head. There we go. Okay. So right now everything is looking wet. I'm going to start reading the story. Okay. So this is the story. It's called Coyote and the Quails. It's a legend of the Pima tribe, which um, they, they live in uh, Arizona. So it's not a California quail, but it's the quail's relatives. Um, so this is the story. Once upon a time, long ago, Coyote was sleeping so soundly that a covey of quails came along and cut pieces of fat meat out of his flesh without arousing them, arousing him. Then they went on. After they had camped for the evening and they were cooking the meat, Coyote came up to the trail. Coyote said, where did you get that nice fat meat? Give me some. Quail ga quails gave him all he wanted. Then he went farther up the trail. After he had gone a little ways, the quails called to him. Coyote, you are eating your own flesh. Coyote said, what did you say? Quails said, oh, nothing. We heard something calling behind the mountains. Soon the quails called again. Coyote, you ate your own meat. What did you say? Oh, nothing. We heard somebody pounding his grinding stone. So Coyote went on, but at last he began to feel where he had been cut. Then he knew what the quills meant. He turned back down the trail and told quills he would eat them up. He began to chase them. The quills flew above the ground. Oh, so in here, it says the quills flew. Hmm. So the quills flew above the ground and Coyote ran about under them. At last they got tired, but Coyote did not because he was so angry. So I'm gonna stop there. My orange and my blue are dry. Um, so I talked about it before. These, uh, these legends, these stories, they're a little different a little weird from stories that we might uh, are more familiar with. Uh, they were always usually legends, especially these legends were told to teach lessons and stories. So um, that's, that's why the quail decided to eat parts of the coyote, I guess. So.
We're gonna continue the story later. Uh, right now, my body is completely dry. So I'm going to start on the texture of the quill's beautiful feathers. And zoom out. So if you still have your blue, if you still have your blue, we're gonna use it to create these little scoop shapes. See how they're kind of like sideways C's? And they go all the way down. Oh, you know what? Yeah, I'm gonna do that. So we're gonna start here. Scoop. And it's so light. And you can go above where the blue is too if you'd like. So scoop, 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 scoop. scoop. All the way down. What a lot of people chat. Is that black? Is that black? Okay, so the head, sorry, I, I didn't hear, I didn't know you were chatting. So yes, up here is black, and then the feet are brown. I make it so I could hear the chat. So we're just going to go all the way down, and we're just using the blue that we have left over. If you don't have blue, you could use brown or even, even black. You could water it down. Going all the way down. I'm not. Okay. Next, if you have black, you can go ahead and paint in the eye and the beak using a tiny brush. When you paint in your eye, See in the original. See in the original. I purposely painted the eye a little smaller, just so there's a white line around it. And I also left a little tiny white spot inside the eye, just so it has a little um, little highlight. If you lose it, if you accidentally paint over it. If you have a uh, white gel pen, you can do that. You can. Like bring it back and save it. If you have um, white acrylic paint, you could use a teeny tiny drop of that. So don't worry if you accidentally cover up 
we're supposed to be white, it's not the end of the world, there are ways to fix it. But we're gonna try our best not to. And so I'm gonna start. So I'm gonna go inside of my eye. I'm not going up to here. All around. I'm leaving that highlight. So beautiful. Oh, thank you so much. Okay, there's our eye. We're gonna leave that be. So here we sit without the light. So you see, I've got a little highlight there still. Turn that back on. All right. So next, we're gonna fill in our peak. Same deal. You can see barely, but I did manage to keep a teeny tiny white line in between my beak. Um, I don't think it's gonna. It's, it's just a tiny little detail that I like about my original. If you fill in your whole beak without that little line, it's not going to compromise your painting. I just like that little detail that I left in there. Okay, so I'm using my teeny tiny brush. I died, do I not? Yeah. Yeah. You're so distinguished. There we go. All right. Hail is colorful. Hail is ready. Hail is ready for the party. Now we can move on to our. All right, if you still have your orange, you can use that. If not, make sure to mix another batch of orange. Uh, remember, red and yellow. And we're also going to mix a little puddle of just yellow because there's like these little glowy spaces that I really like about poppies. They almost look like they glow in the sunlight. I love coffee so much. I'm not choosing my blue anymore, so I'm just going to clear space here for my yellow. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead, pick up some orange, and go to town. Filling in all my flowers. And feel free to use a smaller brush if that's easier for you. Okay. 
Okay, next I'm going to drop in some yellow. Drop in the yellow, we'll put some in the center where that one's sticking out. There we go. Okay, so I'm going to let that do its thing, dry a little bit, and I'm going to continue our story. So, so far, the quail have uh, secretly cut fat from coyote, cooked it, fed it to coyote, told coyote in the most rudest way that he ate his own flesh, and now Coyote is um, angry and chasing after the quail. By and by, quails came to a hole. And one of the keenest, wittest picked up a piece of prickly chola cactus. It's a type of cactus, okay. And pushed it into the hole and they all ran in after it but Coyote dug out the hole and reached them. When he came to the first quail, he said, was it you who told me I ate my own flesh? Quail said, no. So Coyote let him go and he flew away. When Coyote came to the second quail, he asked the same question. Quail said, no, and then flew away. So Coyote asked every quail until the last quail was gone. And then when he came to the cactus branch, to, and then he came to the cactus branch. Now the prickly cactus branch was so covered with feathers that it looked just like a quail. Coyote asked it the same question, but the cactus branch did not answer. Then Coyote said, I know it was you because you do not answer. So, I, so Coyote bit very hard into the hard prickly branch and it killed him. The end. <laughs> the end. <laughs> it's so silly. I like that. I like I, how the coyote bit the like the cactus branch. Yes. Like that. <laughs> yes. That was oh, terrible. So terrible. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Terrible. I love these stories. I wish uh, they need to like, so you know how like Disney uses old fairy tales, like old German fairy tales, now they're getting into like different like Latin fairy tales. They need to do Native American fairy tales. That would be so funny. I could totally see like a whole Disney, Tim, probably Tim Burton because they're so dark. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> like a whole series of these Native American stories. <laughs> ah, yes. So, <laughs> poor Coyote. He gets messed with, he gets tricked, and, and he gets killed for it. And coyotes are supposed to be the tricksters. These quails. Smart. Oh, ruthless. Funny because when I was looking up these quail stories, um, there is specifically a sentence that said, there aren't a lot of Native American quail stories. <laughs> Many tribes thought of quails as modest birds. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, oh, okay, sure. <laughs> what, this right. was the Pima tribe? They didn't. They, they yeah, didn't. no, the Pima tribe. Good for them. I well, said. messed with the uh, mess, mess, must have messed with the Pima tribe. <laughs> All right. So our last bit that we're gonna do, we're gonna mix some green, and we're going to put in our flower stems and our leaves. So I've got a bunch of yellow here left over. I'm just going to. Um, 
put some blue in there, make myself a green. And then, uh, then after we get that done, if we have time left over, I'm going to show you how to make these shadows in these. Uh, oh, good. <laughs> these shadows in here. We have to wait for my flowers to dry. But while we're doing that, we also can start putting in our green. Okay, so I'm going to put some blue. Drop it in there, mix it up. Even though it looks green, we always want to test it. I like that green. That's a pretty close green to the original. Using a small brush, we want to use a small brush because we don't want our stems to be super thick. Small brush. Yeah. And then again. Oh, there we go. Oh. We're starting with the lines we had already put in. So feel free to add more. I think I'm going to add two little blades of grass because why not? Okay. So now for our leaves, we're just going to do like little thin, looks like little branches. Even have it be maybe some of them don't connect. Have it be a stylistic choice. No, I'm already done. Already done. All right. Well, we're almost done. Got about 15 minutes left of class. So we're all gonna share at the end, okay? Almost there. Can't wait to see it. Did you know that it is illegal to pick California poppies in California? No. No. I am shocked. <laughs> it's legal if it's your property, apparently. I learned. But it's illegal if it's on public property. My dad got pretty mad at me when I was a child and I brought up a bunch of poppies. Uh, I think we were either camping or we had gone boating and stopped at an island or something. We did that a lot. Um, and I came up with flowers because I, you know, you're a kid, you pick flowers, you give them to your parents. No, you're not supposed to do that. <laughs> those are, those are, that's illegal. They're going to get you. <laughs> such such a good little lesson. <laughs> I mean, I'm sure we're not going to lose our poppies because of that, but you learned. So that's good. Yes. Good for your dad. Okay. 
It looks very black black. More leaf grass building. Oh, it looks so good. Oh, hang this up. Okay, we got it. That's what's good. Okay, so let's do my flowers. They're a little moist. But I think we can do a shadow. All right. So our last, very last thing we do is ooh. so since these petals overlap, there's a little bit of a shadow going on in between them. And we want to create that same um, illusion. All right. So to do that, if you have your orange, this is what I'm going to. Oh, this is what I talked about when. Um, we yeah. have orange. Recording in progress. Oh. Okay. So uh, what I was talking about when um, you add your uh, complementary colors. What is that? Lucy, you need to mute yourself. There we go. Thank you, Fusi. So funny. Fusi, Fusi, mute that funny. and leave it it's muted. My little sister's computer. Hold on. Fusi, you have to mute yourself. Thank you. I think I just muted her. Good. It, okay. it's, oh, it's, wait. Do, it's is just there, the other computer. Is it the iPad? Oh, everyone's muted. It's Tico. Lucy, please mute that. Okay. I'm Thank muted. you. Okay. Okay. Lucy. We know it's an iPad now. Okay, everybody, please be muted unless you have a question. Okay. And we will be unmuted as soon as we're done with this very last step. Thank you. Okay, so the last thing we're gonna do is we're gonna mix a complementary color with our leftover orange. So um, I wish I had my color rule here, but the complementary color of orange is blue. So we're going to add a little teeny tiny bit of blue to this orange, just a teeny tiny bit, and that should make this orange a little darker. So we're going to get a little tiny bit of blue, not too much. And we'll mix it around. I'm going to add little bits at a time because I don't, I don't want it to turn super dark. I want it eventually it's going to turn brown or even black. There we go. That's a dark orange. Let's test it. So this was my original orange. Let's see where we're at. That's like a very like orangey brown, I would say. Yeah. There we go. So we're going to pick it up, load our brush, and we're going to go where it overlaps. So 
See how that looks like a shadow? Let me turn off the light so I can highlight. Isn't that cool? Let me zoom in a little bit. Okay, go right here. That's cool, right? Okay, and then you can go. It, so even the open one, it probably overlaps on the sides. You can put a little bit of that um, kind of orangey brown on the side. Go. And then down here, you're going to overlap. Perfect. Can I see it right now? Yeah. All right. All done. We're all done. So now everybody, uh, we can start sharing our pictures. I'm going to uh, stop sharing the screen and we can share our beautiful paintings if they're not too wet. So feel free to, so we're all gonna, hold on. Oh, we already got the list, so hold on. Hold on, there we go. Undo me. Oh, so cute. And you guys can unmute too while we're sharing, it's okay. Can you spotlight Callista? Oh, am I not spotlight? No, I'm looking at you. You're beautiful, oh, no. but I want Callista. <laughs> <laughs> okay, hold on. I got you, Callista. Hold on. Wait, where are you? Hold on, Callista. Where I spotlight? Boom. Yes. yes. Oh, excellent. Beautiful. Oh, hello, that looks beautiful. The flowers look yeah, really yeah. good. Good job. So how about Stephanie? Has she got one? Oh, wonderful. Great. Oh my gosh, so good. Good job, Stephanie. I love these textures. Bye. Fusi, are you going to share with us now? Please, not late. Oh, wow. Wow. I love it. Fusi, you, you didn't use the uh, watercolor paper. We want you to use the watercolor paper and it'll it, then it won't wrinkle that way, but it looks great. Looks great, yeah. Good job. You really made the water work for you. <laughs> I like that you used the whole page too. You didn't go tiny, you went big. Very good. Good job. Did anybody else want to share? How about Tracy and Natalie? I'll share. Oh, Did you already highlight yourself? No. Okay, hold on. like those like scientific illustrations just how like, okay. well that's the shadows the shadows yeah. thank yeah. you for teaching us the shadows <laughs> Good job. oh natalie oh, oh, oh keep holding it up hold it hold it keep holding boy that's a, a whole bunch of flowers i see Not like <gasps> yes oh. Yeah, I love those. What a cute I little quail. Like oh my it. goodness. Oh, Wait, we didn't see Tracy. Oh. oh. Tracy. Tracy. We're going to have to see your names on them so we can know who is who. Put your names on them, please. Those should all be in the show. Yes. <laughs> so the show, Um, I'm not, I'm. 
So is the show is it in person? Or the show will be online again. Online, okay. Right. So, okay. but that means that you send us the files instead right. of us trying to collect the pictures themselves. So okay. that that piece is nice. You just have to send them in. <laughs> yes, please, please take pictures, please. They yeah. want to take a picture of your yes, piece, please. so we have to share your screen again. Yes, please. Share your share your artwork. Yeah. Oh, nah, nah. Here? No, we want to see your artwork again. Your piece. Oh, take a picture of mine? Yeah, yeah. That's they they love oh. your work. Oh, whoops. You're our hero, Cecily. Oh, <laughs> oh you're our lead artist. <laughs> oh shucks. Okay, hold on. Let me share it. <laughs> there we go. There we go. So, so beautiful. I love it. I love how my uh most of them I noticed how my my first one usually looks a little more realistic than my second one. So my name like is it's just like slowly turning a little more cartoony. <laughs> <laughs> one, the one that just went way too far is probably the deer. The deer, I, I would go and do that one over. But the rest of them, yeah, I've noticed like even like the crow, the crow's kind of got like a cute little Disney-esque to it. <laughs> Interesting. All right. Well, that was sure fun. All right. Colorful. So, yay. Thank you guys for painting with me. I had so much fun. I love these little guys and and I love all the colors. Um, I do want to do for one of our last ones. I do want to do either I really want to do a mountain lion cuz mountain lions are just like so yeah. America. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, so that, that's going to be a, a brown, like a lot of black and browns for that one. But I really want to experiment and look at all the different colorful um, animals that we have in our last few ones. A peacock? So. I don't think that's going to be a North American wildlife. <laughs> Which one? Can I look at now? A peacock. I don't oh, think a peacock. A peacock I know they up. are in America. They're here, but I don't think they're from here. I know I, I went through the same thing like are flamingos American? How so about an elephant? No. Kangaroo? No. <laughs> <laughs> All right, no. guys. No. Uh, thank you so much for painting. Class is dismissed. Make sure to send in your paintings for the show. Right, bye guys. Um, see y'all next week. See you. Bye.